we are just continuing in uh, what I believe is such a word and one of the things that the Lord told me is that as I preach these words on engaging this generation God is going to birth the very thing that is being preached because the word of God says after he commissioned his apostles and by extension the church the word of God said that the Lord was with them working with them and confirming his word confirming the word with signs and wonders one of the things I want you to understand about God's word God's word is not God's word except it be confirmed with signs and wonders and signs and wonders are not confined it's not limited to healings financial breakthroughs and things like that we have really you know boxed God in to just doing miracles we have boxed God into just doing uh, what I call local miracles and local signs and wonders that which affects you but I'm believing God for miracles signs and wonders of a national and global proportion I, I have destroyed that little box that I was living in praise God that's why city have became city global praise the name of the Lord and if you understand city with foundations that's a plural word foundations praise the name of the Lord we give God praise and when I think of foundations I think of more than just uh, the, 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 the foundation as that word in that context says that word foundations is the word familios and it means first principles first principles mean uh, what one begins with and what is so significant with that is the Bible in the book of Proverbs says wisdom is the principal not principle but principal thing and the word principle means to begin with to start with and therefore where God is concerned if you are about to embark upon something if you don't have the wisdom to begin then you should not begin at all you should not begin at all and this is where the mightiness of God comes in the wisdom of God is not the wisdom of men as a matter of fact Paul was being very sarcastic and he said the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men God's wisdom does not come from going and learning four years in a university that is the upper hand with the wisdom of God but you have to go to university to learn the wisdom of this world four years and the next four years to get your doctorates and bachelors and what have you but you don't need four years to receive the wisdom of God the Bible declares within the sincerity of your heart if you lack wisdom let him ask of God and God who give it liberally will give it to you but when he asks let him not ask uh, let him ask in faith for he that does not ask in faith will not receive anything from the Lord Solomon he asks for wisdom and knowledge to lead God's people as he became king of Israel when you become king listen when you become king anointed king of Israel do you think you have time to go to King University there's no time to go to King University David did not go to King University David was anointed as king when he was 17 years old God was preparing a man and preparing a voice to speak to his generation and the way that how God introduced him on the scene was nothing but spectacular not sensational 
but spectacular, but miraculous. That's when he took down Goliath. But Pastor Alicia was making reference to this sometime before and, and, and letting us know that before David came onto the public scene and was introduced to his generation, he was defeating bears, defeating lions in the in the in the sheepfold. We we have we know the story of David. Sometimes nobody is seeing you. Nobody saw Moses leading the sheep up in the uh, uh, up in the in the hills until he stood before God, and God was about to introduce Moses to a generation. And by extension, Moses being successful now would influence and affect generations to come. And it's amazing by the time Jesus came, what the generation that Jesus met did with what Moses brought forth and brought into existence. They misconstrued, they misinterpreted uh, the law and created for themselves their own traditions and made the word of God of none effect. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm speaking to not city with foundations. I'm not speaking to city global. I'm speaking to my generation. I'm speaking to a generation. Because when God deals with nations, he deals with nations from a generational basis. He's a God of generations. The first time, the word generation is used in the is in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 5. These are the generations of the creation, heaven and earth. The second time he mentioned the word generation is when he spoke to Abraham and told Abraham that your descendants will be in bondage for 400 years and in the fourth generation I will bring them out. But the nation that will have them in bondage I will judge that nation I will judge that nation but they will come out in the fourth generation why? because the iniquity the works of the Amorites have not yet been full have not yet come to fruition and that's when God judges God doesn't just you know execute judgment all willy-nilly God looks at a generation and gives that generation a timeline gives that generation ample time to repent glory to God and as that generation begin to execute works works that are inconsistent with the will of God and those works begin to mature and characterize that generation when those works come to maturity God begins to act and he acts through the men and women of God that are existing in that generation at that time he begins to raise them up hallelujah individually and sometimes collectively as churches come onto the scene and God will give that church a, a, a solid voice oh that man of God or woman of God listen this is just an introduction and so I want everybody to really ask God for the eyes of your understanding to be opened up as we get into this word. I'm going to ask again, I've been asking every Sunday, to what generation do you belong? To what generation do you belong? If, 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 if I believe that the, the enemy really distracted the world and categorized you and put you in generations that was identified and characterized by the wisdom of this world and so they looked at you and said that you were born in in the baby boomers time because why a lot of babies were being born and they described you as that but out of that baby boomers generation one might say there's a lot of babies were born in all sorts of different ways 
out of wedlock in marriage it didn't matter it was still iniquity then we had the generation X then we have what my sons call Gen Z or Millennials and they try to categorize you and fit you in let me tell you something Jesus came onto the scene and identified the generations and he only introduced two of them the children of this world are in their generation wiser or more astute than the children of light are in their generation that speaks to me of two primary generations that exist right now to which generation or to whom do you belong I ask that question because this is very important because every generation has a destination remember Jesus said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees he said uh, uh, you you generation of serpents and vipers how shall you escape that damnation of hell hell is real hell is a place of temporary confinement until the end of the age comes and God says in the book of Revelation that he cast death and hell into the lake of fire there is one destination for the generation that facilitates the children of this world and that is damnation into hell and there is one destination that facilitates the children of light and that is into eternal salvation with Jesus Christ to whom generation do you belong and how do you know that you belong to such a generation Mm. I want to admonish you in Acts chapter 3 Peter in preaching rather Acts chapter 2 Peter in preaching to the masses that came to Jesus Christ at the end of his preaching the Bible declares and Peter admonished them with many other words saying to them save yourselves from this untoward generation as the word generation comes back again he said save yourself from this untoward that word untoward literally means destruction damnation a generation that is heading towards a destination that is of destruction and if you don't believe it we'll just remain in that generation and when you reach your destination tell me about it after I am not waiting to find out glory to God I'm not waiting to find out what damnation looks like <laughs> I'm not waiting to find out what damnation looks like it's very important to identify the generation we live in within the context of the gospel of Christ hear me carefully within the context of the gospel of Christ COVID-19 does not identify my generation and it does not give me the cue the vaccinations that are presented does not give me the cue what gives me the cue is the gospel of Jesus and the word of Jesus the apostle said what will be the signs of when these things will happen and the sign of your coming back and Jesus began to lay it out and the first thing he said is that there will be many false prophets many shall be deceived the first thing that listen oh so carefully the first thing that Jesus said as it relates to the sign of my return is many shall be deceived in this generation many shall be deceived how how some people that think Christians are being deceived when in fact that the ones who are claiming that many believers are deceived are deceived and how are
are they deceived by false doctrines many believers think that false doctrines are only confined to the church or to religion because doctrine has become a very religious word no the word doctrine simply means teaching and instructions and there are doctrines that are in this world that the Bible called doctrines of men and doctrines of devils and what the enemy has done is is really really bring a deception because he understands that the people of God is looking for deception in a particular way but what the enemy has done is flip the script and cause them to see a deception which is not really the deception and that is the deception <laughs> Oh, praise the Lord praise the Lord let's just continue <laughs> let's continue glory to God I'm telling you by the Spirit of God what many think is the deception they are being saved by what they think is the deception so while they think other people are being deceived and other people are being gullible really and truly they are being gullible and they are being deceived let's continue you're going to understand what i mean hallelujah oh glory to god it's very important that we identify the generation that we live in there's a reason for it david understood that he he understood the generation that he lived in and he was so close to god when you read the psalms david said some things man was not even for his generation David said some things that were speaking into the generation of the gospel. If I have time, I will show you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 